Welcome to your PwC Connections, a monthly look at what's happening inside PwC and out in our community. I'm Courtney Lucas. Engineers make the world go round. Don't believe me? Just ask an engineer. I'm kidding, but in all seriousness, if it weren't for engineers, the world as we know it would look a lot different. Each February, we celebrate National Engineers Week, which gives us an opportunity to bring attention to the contributions engineers make and emphasize the importance of learning math, science, and technical skills. In today's Employee Spotlight, we'll chat with a few of our engineers to find out why they decided to pursue a career in engineering and what they love about their chosen profession. After that, we'll learn all about GIS, drafting, mapping, and surveying in today's How Does It Work? But that's not the only thing we're focusing on this month. We want you to cease the grease too. Sewer overflows caused by grease blockages are on the rise, but they don't have to be. We have a simple solution to prevent this major problem and it won't cost you a dime. We'll tell you how and inside PwC. Then we're rolling on a new segment and it's our chance to highlight the latest news from PwC. Plus, dear Gabby, so stay tuned. <laughs> I am responsible for overseeing the design and construction of water and sewer in the annexation neighborhoods and um, coordinating with the Department of Transportation when they do urban widening projects and relocating our facilities. I attended North Carolina State University. Um, I started out in mechanical engineering, but as I got into the curriculum, um, civil engineering was more of a fit for me. So I pursued that with a concentration in transportation. Um, from there, I worked at the DOT, the North Carolina Department of Transportation, for while I was in college and also when I got out of college, that's where I worked. And then I came here about six and a half years ago. I've always been interested in math and science. Um, I've excelled in math, and my high school calculus teacher actually introduced me to the field of engineering. At the time, I did not know what an engineer was or what they did, but um, as I started researching it, it really fit with my interest, and um, so I decided to take that path and see where it would go. As I got into it and started looking into it, I decided to go the mechanical route because I grew up in the fire department and was a volunteer firefighter and um, my dad was the chief of the fire department so um, I got to be around when they were specking some of the trucks and designing them and got to go and tour a plant as part of that and so when I first went in I went in as mechanical and that was one of the things I wanted to do was design fire trucks. But as I got in, civil was more of a fit for me um, because one, I wanted to stay local to North Carolina and there's not any plants where you build fire trucks in North Carolina. So plus, I really like things that don't move. They have a definite, you know, um, answer. So I didn't really like working with moving parts as much as I thought I would like working with moving parts. So I had a really great advisor at college, so I decided to steer more towards the civil direction. I have never found it difficult to be a woman in a man's world because well, I grew up in the fire department, I've, I grew up, I have a brother, and I just don't see a difference. I mean, I look at you as the person that you are, and I feel like people look at me as an engineer, not as a woman engineer or a woman in a man's field. The atmosphere here at PwC is very supportive. Um, whether you're male or female, they're supportive of everyone in any position, but especially in the engineering position, they offer technical support and training and education. And I've just had a very great experience here. All the comforts we have, air condition, cars to drive, buildings, homes to live in, roads to ride on, are because of engineers. Um, and it's not just civil, mechanical, electrical engineers. You have agricultural engineers who give us the food, the different varieties of food to eat. You have industrial engineers who make up the processes so that we can process those foods. You have um, electrical engineers for electricity, and it's just awesome. Without them, we couldn't survive. I've been with PwC for two years. As an electrical engineer here, a lot of what we do is just making sure that the system um, continues to meet the needs and demands of our customers. 
Um, sometimes that can be uh, identifying old parts or parts that aren't working the way we, we need them to work and you know, finding a replacement or upgrading them. That could be um, issues that are happening such as you know squirrels on the lines or trying to um, come up with a way to just get rid of things that could affect our system and reduce our reliability. I think I kind of identified the traits of an engineer kind of early. Um, well, I guess not identified them, but I kind of displayed them kind of early. Um, a lot of times my parents would bring, buy me something and bring it home and, you know, I was interested in playing in it, but some of it was, what's in there? You know, why does it work the way it works? So, you know, there's been a number of times they'd bring something home and I'd take it apart, you know, have pieces all over the place. And, you know, a lot of times it didn't work anymore when I put it back together, but it was just that feeling of accomplishment, you know, when I did put it back together and it worked. So, you know, that on top of always being really good at math, and, you know, in high school, I took an engineering course and it just kind of, you know, let me know that that was the path I needed to take. Engineering is so important because engineers are the world's greatest problem solvers. So without us, you know, problems would just be running rampant. There would be nobody to solve them. And that's what we do. You know, there's that curiosity there, um, how things work, how can we solve an issue? So you know, that's, that's what we're made to do, just solve problems. I think the big thing is finding out what type of engineer you want to be. So, you know, for me, it was a course I took in high school that kind of said, all right, you know, you like electrical, well, let's, let's focus on electrical engineering, let's see what goes on there. You know, even here, you know, we have internships, we've had you know, high school students that have come in to do on-the-job shadowing, you know, so just identify somebody who's in the field of engineering who, you know, may just give you the opportunity to see what you do, well, what they do, and allow you to, you know, just sit down with them, you know, and, and explain what's going on. I did an internship uh, in Orlando, Florida with uh, Naval Air Warfare Systems to where, you know, on that one, it was a bunch of simulations, you know, um, and it just, it kind of showed me that I didn't want to do that part of engineering. So, you know, in identifying what you want to do, you also find out what you don't. Well, I think, you know, it's, it's really important for students to get into STEM because, you know, there's always going to be a need for that. You know, there's a huge gap already between, you know, older people who got involved and people who are currently involved now that, you know, once we, once those people start rolling off and retiring or, you know, going other places, you know, that need is still going to be there. It's always going to be important. I have been here a little over a year, started last December. I was a consulting engineer in the private sector uh, with a small consulting firm in Lumberton, North Carolina, where I live. Uh, we did a lot of site development, site design. So that's what kind of helped me transi transition into this position here. Uh, we have delegated permitting authority from the state of North Carolina. Uh, the state has to review and approve any water or sewer main extensions that are proposed in the state of North Carolina. and. We actually went through in 2003 and obtained our local delegated permitting authority. So here at PwC, we actually issue any water or sewer permits that are uh, proposed within City of Fayetteville, Hope Mills, surrounding areas in our service area. And the reason we have that permitting is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. That's the charge for the professional engineer. Our governing board requires that we at all times protect the safety, health, and welfare of the public. So your drinking water, you want to make sure it's safe and uh, you want to make sure that your toilet's flush and things like that. So a lot of times it's, it's kind of a joke that nobody bothers to, to wonder what goes on in engineering until something goes wrong. Uh, and I think a lot of people saw that, for example, during the hurricane when their water went out, everybody was wondering what's going on. So that's what we're here doing a lot of those things that go underground, water lines, sewer lines are underground. People don't think about them until something goes wrong. But we're constantly here trying to make sure that things run smoothly. And so the permitting uh, part of that is required to make sure that any new lines go in, protect the health and welfare of the public. We want to make sure that uh, they're put in according to the standards and the requirements that the state has set forth to make sure that we protect those things. So. Wanted to become an engineer because growing up, I always loved knowing how things worked. I was always building, trying to, to put things together. And so my mom and dad always uh, loved, I don't know that they loved having things lying around, just broken apart, torn apart, putting them back together. 
some projects I'd finish, some I wouldn't, but I've always enjoyed that. And then in school, I really enjoyed my math classes. And it's a shocker, I know, but nobody loves math, right? But uh, I loved math, and so my teachers and professors all thought that that'd be the best way to go. And I always, you know, loved that and kind of knew that at an early age. I, I think I wanted to go into engineering just for those reasons. So, you know, kids today want to make a difference and want to have an impact immediately getting out of school. And a lot of times you may have to work somewhere a while before you start really seeing that impact. But in engineering, you start seeing that impact right away. And that's what I love about engineering is you don't have to wait to see that impact. It's something that, that is right there in front of you as soon as you start to work. There are many, many different types of engineering. Uh, that's one thing that people don't realize. Everything you touch, everything you do has been touched by an engineer, there's been an engineer's input on that. Like you wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, you go to the bathroom, you take a shower. Engineers had an impact on that. You get in your car, drive here. Engineers had an impact on that. So uh, that's that's something that we, the world needs engineers. Keeps the engineers keep the world going around. So. Household appliances get a lot of use and can use a tremendous amount of energy. Following are some great tips to make sure that the appliances are used more energy efficiently. Older refrigerators in unconditioned spaces like garages use a lot more energy than indoor refrigerators. A refrigerator in a 90 degree environment will use 45 to 50% more energy than a refrigerator in a 70 degree environment. A full refrigerator uses less energy than an empty one. Move all of your food from your outside fridge to your indoor one and unplug the one outside. If you still need more space, try to find a spot inside your home for your second fridge or freezer. Test your refrigerator and freezer gasket by putting a piece of paper there and closing the door. If you can easily pull the paper out, the gasket needs replacing. Keep your refrigerator between 37 and 40 degrees. Keep your freezer compartment at 5 degrees. Those are the most common drains on your appliances, so check them out and lower your energy bill. GIS stands for Geographic Information System and it's a computer program that collects all the the data for water and sewer assets in PWC system. Not only for the engineering part of it where they can analyze the the data, the ages of the pipes, know when to replace them, know what uh, sizes they are, to know if we've got enough uh, capacity in sewer lines or enough uh, enough water to, to pump out to the system on the water. Uh, they also, construction uses it to know where the assets are at when we have a water line break or a sewer, sewer overflow or they need to do maintenance on it. Uh, and then any new stuff that they build, we collect that data and add it back into the GIS. Say there's a water line break. Uh, once we find where the water line breaks at, the construction crews will use the GIS to know where that line's at, where it's physically located on the ground. Uh, they can use that map and know where the valves are out to be able to turn those valves off to isolate that line to fix it. If it's a new asset going in the ground, water and sewer, uh, line, manhole, water valve, hydrant, anything attached to that line, we send the survey crew out to GPS it. GPS is Geographic Position System and that gets a coordinate on each asset. So we can use that coordinate to put that data back into the GIS to draw it very, very accurately. Then once we get that physical location, the GIS tech attributes that line with all the information we need on it. When it was installed, uh, what size it is, what material, uh, and, and there's you know, a couple dozen attributes that go along with it. So not only the, the water and sewer, electric does the same type of work for all their assets. Surveying technologies came a long ways from this behind me to uh, some very, very uh, high-tech equipment that we use today. Now we're into drones uh, and laser scanners, and what we use is a, like a robotic instrument, which nobody has to physically turn. It will follow you around with a prism pole.
You may recognize the surveyors out, they work out in the field typically just about every day uh, and you'll see them with a surveying instrument on top of the tripod and they'll have a pole and it's a, what we call a prism pole and it's for the laser, it's a mirror on top and it shoots a laser to the mirror and bounces back uh, and it, that'll tell you the distance and the angle and we'll use that to calculate the coordinates. And that's how it works. There was a sewer overflow. Uh, the overflow was caused by grease in the lines. And uh, we're out here to clean it up, get it out of the line, and then we're putting a camera into the line to make sure we're getting it all out. The camera it follows behind the, the trucks that are actually pulling, cleaning out all the grease making sure it gets all the grease out, making sure that there's not any roots that the grease was getting hung on to cause more blockages. They call it a vacuum truck, but it's a combination truck because it does a combination of cleaning and vacuuming. And that's what they're doing several, a uh, couple streets down, they're cleaning and vacuuming all the grease out. Grease is a problem because um, customers pour it down the drain not knowing what it does. It, it goes into the down the drain into the into the sewer mains, and it just sticks to the sides of the walls. And after time, it just builds up and builds up and builds up before you know it, clogs up the pipe. Wherever the overflow happened, we'll usually go in and uh, go several sections up and several sections down to clean all of those sections to make sure wherever the blockage was, we clean. People think just because it's a small amount that it doesn't matter, but when you take one person, then another person, then another, and you got your whole neighborhood doing the same thing, then it builds up and it builds up. And even though it's liquid, when it gets into the, to the sewer mains, it solidifies and sticks to the walls. And that's causing the stoppages and that's causing the overflows into the storm drains and the lakes. It just causes a big mess. The problem we have with restaurants is if they don't have their grease traps cleaned out on a regular basis, then the grease is esca escaping from the grease traps into the laterals going into the, into the sewer mains. And, and it's doing the same thing. It builds up and it builds up. And then there's another overflow. Uh, the properly dispose of the, the grease as far as household they have the fat trappers you can get through PWC. Or another way is just to take an old jar that you're not using, dump it into there when it gets full, dispose of it in your waste. Um, definitely do not pour down the drain. And as far as disposable wipes, they're not uh, completely disposable. They break down over time. So uh, they still cause problems with, with the sewer system. Um, baby wipes, people flush with baby wipes, not even thinking about it. They cause the same problems as rags, uh, paper towels. Um, they'll get caught. I've, I've been on several jobs where laterals are clogged up with baby wipes. And people just don't think about it. They just flush them. And just because a, a wipe or a paper towel says flushable, when you flush them, it takes a, a long time to degrade. It's not instantaneous. It, and they still cause problems with the sewer. The way it affects the customers with the grease and the overflows is there's manholes in people's yards, in the front yards or in the backyards. And if there's an overflow, that overflow will happen in the backyard or can happen in the backyard where your kids and your dogs are playing and that's very unsanitary. So when you're dumping this down the drain, think about your kids. I mean, your kids would be playing in this. Another problem that grease can cause is overflows and backups coming into the house. If there's a house and a low-lying, um, at the bottom of a hill, let's say, the sewer's gonna go to the path of least resistance. And that can be coming up into someone's house through their toilets, their, their sinks, their, their showers and just cause a really big mess in your house. The reason I dispose of grease properly is I see what 
it does on a daily basis. Um, every day, we always find grease. No matter what neighborhood, what area, there's always grease. And it's, it's, it's a big problem. And it's such an easy thing to take care of. It would make everyone's life a lot easier if people would just dispose of it properly. It would save us time, it would save our environment, and it would save our kids' environment for future. Did you know when you use hot water to clean your laundry, 90% of the energy used is to heat the water? In reality, there are very few situations where you need to use hot water to clean your laundry. Use cold water and save big. Install aerators on your faucets. Install low flow shower heads, two gallons per minute or lower. You can now find affordable low flow shower heads that deliver strong water pressure. Lower the thermostat on your water heater to 120 degrees and insulate your electric hot water storage tank. You might be surprised these simple tips can save you a lot on your energy bill. Hi, and welcome to Take One, our newest segment highlighting the latest news, upcoming events, and important FYIs from the Fayetteville Public Works Commission. We're counting down to one of the biggest events of the year. The Fayetteville Home Design and Remodeling Show is set for February 24th through 26th at the Crown Expo Center. Come see us for tips on how to lower your water and energy consumption. Plus, speak with conservation experts about ways to save at home and take home useful conservation items like LED bulbs and fat trappers. Take a look at this month's customer newsletter enclosed in your bill or visit our website for a coupon to get $2 off the price of admission. Mark your calendar now for the third annual Power and Water Conservation Expo on Friday, March 24th and Saturday, March 25th at Skyview on Hay in downtown Fayetteville. The expo was free and open to the public. Just like the home show, we hope you'll come on out and learn ways to save on your energy and water bill. And fill up your complimentary reusable tote with handy conservation items and tree seedlings. The expo is extra special because you'll get to meet some of our in-house heroes, also known as linemen, and our educational mascots, Willie Waterdrop and Wally Watt Watcher. Also in March, the state requires utilities to temporarily stop adding ammonia to its water treatment disinfection process once a year. We call this our annual water changeover. Beginning Wednesday, March 1st, PwC will stop adding ammonia and will resume adding it to the water treatment process on Saturday, April 1st. Because of the change, some water users may experience a chlorine odor. Some users of water may also experience periods of discolored water as a result of the system maintenance during the process. Although we won't add ammonia to the water in March, there could still be traces of ammonia in the system that would need to be removed prior to the water being used in fish aquariums and ponds, kidney dialysis, and some commercial manufacturing of food and beverage. If you have questions about the changeover, please give us a call at 910-483-1382 or check out our website for additional information. We also have a great video available on our YouTube channel that further explains the annual changeover. 33,600. That's how many street lights and area lights PwC maintains, approximately. We do our best to keep the lights on, but sometimes we need your help to let us know if street lights are out in your neighborhood. If you notice that a light is in need of maintenance, please call us or complete the street light area light repair form on our website. We'll need to know the location of the street light, the nearest cross street, the poll number, and your contact information. Thanks for watching Take One. Remember to stay in the know by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Electric cars have a major impact on local air quality as they have zero operating emissions and an overall reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. Electric cars also have lower operational costs and have lower maintenance costs because of fewer moving parts than gas-powered vehicles. 
If you drive an electric vehicle or are considering buying one, PwC has a great offer for you. Thanks to a grant from the North Carolina Clean Energy Technology Center, PwC has installed four Level 2 charging stations that can be used for free. Together with our partners at Fayetteville Cumberland County Parks and Recreation and Market Fair Mall, these stations have been made available across Fayetteville. Each station can charge two cars at once and are available seven days a week. Free charging stations are located at Market Fair Mall, Clark Park, Honeycutt Park, and Lake Rim Park. For more information on PwC and our free charging stations, please visit our website at fayypwc.com. I don't understand it. I love my flowers, but I can't figure out how to water these. But it's time to think about something else, because I can't grow anything, <laughs> except millions and millions of viewers who all send me letters every single week. One thing we like to do on this show is just choose a letter at random and see if we can answer somebody's questions, like this one. Dear Gabby, help! I'm a busy college student on my own for the first time, rushing to class, cramming for exams, pulling all-nighters, and hustling to work. That's my reality. I have a question about my PwC account, but I don't have an extra moment to come into an office to speak with a representative in person. Is there another way for me to get in contact with PwC? Little Miss Busybody, Bonnie. <laughs> so cute, Bonnie. Dear Bonnie, I feel your pain. These days we're all incredibly busy. Being pulled in a thousand and one different directions has become the norm. And here at PwC we know that which is why we offer our customers multiple convenient ways to get in contact with us. If you aren't able to visit our customer service center, located at the corner of Old Wilmington Road and Eastern Boulevard, consider calling us. And who doesn't have a phone on them right now? We're open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. If you're really in a hurry, I recommend calling later in the evening when the calls have tapered off a bit. You can also send us an email. The address is customer.service at fayypwc.com. You can request that a rep give you a call at a time that's convenient for you, like in the middle of your science exam. Or ask your question right in the body of an email. We also receive inquiries by mail, although I suspect that's not really your speed since you're moving lightning fast from one place to the next. But just in case, our address is P.O. Box 1089, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28302. Make sure you're to address the letter to customer service. Keep up the good work, Bonnie. Your hard work will pay off. And you keep those cards and letters coming. And remember, you can always catch your favorite show on the PwC website, fayypwc.com, or on our YouTube channel. Till next time, I'm Gabby. More power to you.